Hey guys, even here, so let's check out what happened at Boston Pro, we're gonna do a little analysis of the first callout, the second callout and the classic physique. So let's go first uh, with the first callout in open bodybuilding and uh, we had uh, William Bonek, Steve Kuklo, uh, Samson Dauda and Justin Rodriguez which is basically the top 5 from the Arnold Classic without Brandon Curry. But this time around, I don't think it's gonna be the same, unless um, Justin somehow messes it up again. This time around, I think Justin climbed up those two spots, I think he's beating both Steve and Samson. I think he should have been a third at the Arnold Classic, but he completely ruined it in the finals. Now, I'm a not fan of his physique, but you can't deny all this muscularity, and he does know how to come crispy conditioned. As far as Bonac, did he improve? I think he came the same, maybe a little bit worse. Is it gonna be enough for him to win the show? Most likely, but you guys heard what Jim Mannion had to say. The reason why he didn't win the Arnold Classic was the gyno and no details in the abdominal region in midsection area. Did he improve that? No, it might be looking even worse. Could he improve it in a week? If the gyno is prolactin induced, which is often the case when you up the trend before the show, then you can use, uh, he can use Cabergolin, also known as Dostinex, to lower his prolactin levels, which is something Chad Nichols obviously knows. So maybe they tried it, it didn't work, maybe it's not that kind of a gyno. And as far as the, the abdomen, like it could be like a, a water retention, but maybe he didn't train it during the off season. I think he also had a hernia surgery, but maybe it's just his body holding on to more fat or more water in that region. Whatever is the case, I don't know, he didn't fix it, but he did beat Justin, Steve and Samson at the Arnold Classic. Now, is he gonna beat them again here? I mean, look at his side chest. I think he deserves it. Maybe the win won't be as clean as it would be if he had those things under control, but still, I think he did enough. Now from the back, Justin, look at Justin, Justin is really thick from the back and his glutes really get dry, maybe not as separated as bone eggs, but dry, and the back is actually wider, maybe it has even more details, maybe not as thick, but it's a good back, a lower body, bone egg is just unbeatable, he's so thick, now as far as Samson and Steve, I think they both brought it, right? I mean, they, they are pretty much the same like they were at the Arnold. I don't see any problems uh, with those two physiques, but it's just, you know, William came pretty much more or less the same and Justin improved. Justin came sharper. Look at the width. Look at the width. You know, maybe in this pose I have him beating Bonek, but not in the others, not in the majority of the poses. So, yeah, I don't see Justin beating Bonek. I, I still think Bonek is going to win this show. But anything is possible. I was so sure that Bonac is going to win the Arnold. He didn't. Now, this is a horrible pose for Justin. Um, his, uh, his triceps are pretty much non-existent in this pose. There is no horseshoe. Like, that, that front part of the tricep is non-existent. The, the arm is not small. He has mass, but no detail. This is a horrible pose for two guys in the middle, but Bonac is uh, really bad at it. You just saw it earlier. So, it showcases his gyno and his uh, lack of detail in the abs. Now, most muscular, now you see it, it's obviously between these two guys in the middle, and who is winning it? I must say, this is close. It's most likely gonna be Bonag, but, you know, if it is that close, really, then maybe, maybe Bonag is gonna be actually marked down because of that gyno. Uh, Justin has no gyno. Uh, as far as his stomach, his midsection, it's also not very pretty. But now with his conditioning, he is a dangerous bodybuilder. You can see now how much he progressed during the offseason. Did you see that, by the way? Let me rewind. Uh, so Justin, in the back poses, he can't really showcase his hamstrings. It looks like there is no detail in the hamstrings. But apparently, it's just a posing issue, because look at this. Look at this. He actually has great hamstrings. Look. Wow. He should definitely learn how to flex those hamstrings when he does the back double bicep. It's not really that complicated. Uh, here, look, I mean, he doesn't really flex it as much as he could. But that back is overwhelming and he's absolutely killing Steve Cook on the left. And fighting a close battle with William Bonek. Uh, I personally do have William Bonek winning. But after what happened at the Arnold Classic, we cannot be sure. These judges, they can decide whatever the hell they want. 
We're gonna find out in a couple of hours what happened, but Justin brought it. Now, just like William Bonek was marked down at the Arnold because of gyno and no detail in the stomach, maybe Justin is gonna be marked down for that uh, scintle in his legs. Look at the left quad. I mean, it's really apparent that he pushed a lot of oil in those legs. So it's probably hurting his look. I mean, maybe it added like to, to his silhouette, but I'm sure the judges from that first row are seeing uh, the problem. So maybe I, based on the callouts, yeah, I think he's fighting for first. He's gonna be in the in the top two. But if the judges in the IBB Pro League are gonna mark down guys for those kind of issues like they did with the Bonac, maybe they should be consistent and actually put Justin behind Steve and Samson. And I personally wouldn't like to see that. I think Bonac won it and I think Justin was second and I think Bonac was first in the Arnold. But, you know, it's their call. Let's see how consistent the judges will be. Real quick, let's check the second call out. So we had Phil Klahar, who was last year battling with Steve Kuklo and Ian Valier at a Texas Pro, and he looked really good. Now he did not bring it. No, unfortunately, he, he messed it up. This was not uh, him at his best. Max Charles, though, he came in shredded. <laughs> like, this guy gets rock hard. But he has a problem with details in his legs, in his back, and also the size of his quads which is basically getting worse year after year, and this year it's bad enough that he can't really be fighting for those top positions at these kind of high-level shows. And right here, you can see the reason why everybody thinks Regan Grimes can be one of the top guys if he finally nailed it. Now, this is him standing next to Steve Kukla. Yes, Steve is on the left and Regan is on the right. Uh, let me show you actually a couple of photos that Milos Harchev took. Now, they are flattering, of course. Regan is looking straight to the camera. He probably saw Milos taking these photos. The, the reason why Steve is better here is mainly the quad details, maybe uh, upper body detail as well. As you can see, the size is very comparable. They are both big and tall guys, and Steve is actually standing closer to the camera here. You can see that he has more maturity, but like the size itself. Uh, look at this area here, the adductors, the hamstrings, the glutes, and look at the traps, like the back. Just look at how much muscle Regan actually has. Look at the back double bicep, like his back, his legs from behind, like his body from behind. It looks really big, like he is a massive bodybuilder, really. I mean, not just tall and big like that, but he actually has a lot of muscle on his frame. Now, I'm sure we cannot see on these low-quality photos uh, how how conditioned Steve Kuklo actually is. I'm pretty sure he's uh, in much better shape. You just don't see it here in these photos. And he has more maturity. He's an older guy. He's like 36, I believe, right now. And Regan is like 29, I think. So it's probably pretty safe to say that Regan is the future of this sport. Now let's check out the classic physique, Urs absolutely killed it here, for some reason Ramon and Brian didn't show up, I don't know if they are qualified, I don't know how it works, because Ramon was second at the Arnold, he was fifth at the Mr. Olympia, but Brian was third at the Mr. Olympia, so I think he is qualified, but I don't know about Ramon, and I don't know why he didn't show up, anyways it was between Urs and the guy close to him, the short guy, and sure, the guy looks pretty good, but I think Urs is just much better. And I think this is a much improved version of Urs. So he came in pretty much the same conditioning, just fuller in the upper body. And if he was like this at the Arnold, could he beat Ramon? Could he actually be second or even win the show? I don't know, probably not. So we probably shouldn't say he messed it up at the Arnold because it probably wouldn't make a difference. And now he came uh, much better, much better. Still very conditioned, like at the Arnold, just fuller. Look at the lower lats. Now he's showing some serious detail. Look at the back. It actually looks good. Even though it's like a weak point of his, when he's full like this, it looks good. And look at the transition between the back double bicep to the abs and thighs. It's a nice transition, right? And look at the details. Now look at the depth in the abs. He did not have that at the Arnold. Uh, his legs are looking really good like they always do. Uh, overall, just really good physique. Really classic physique. Uh, I like it. And that's gonna do it for this Boston Pro 2022 analysis. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more bodybuilding stuff like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much guys for watching. All the best and bye-bye.